And uh, you don't want to be burnt out of gardening before your gardening season has actually started. Hi there, Prevalent Girl here. Well, as you may have uh, heard in my last video, I, uh, I want to get some snapdragons planted out nice and early this year. So I'm 16 weeks away from my average last frost date. And uh, that's not a time when you generally want to get a lot of seeds going and uh, start filling up your growing space. But I am going to be planting a few of my little bedding plant snapdragons just so I can get a few out early with hopefully some flowers um, before my last frost date because snapdragons are quite frost hardy um, and uh, they, they can be put out. You just need to be really careful about um, hardening them off really carefully and slowly uh, to the, the cold weather and uh, just giving them that time to acclimate is really important when you're putting out seedlings um, as opposed to plants that might be frost hardy at the end of the season when they're mature plants. Um, so I'm not going to plant just a whole ton of them, but I'm gonna do a couple of these little nine packs. Um, so what I have here is the uh, mini snap mix. I've grown these before, they're really sweet. I'm not sure how many I have left here. I should have enough to do a nine pack. And then I have the Snaptini mix, which I don't think I've ever grown before, um, but I'm gonna try some of those. So normally when you're planting your Snapdragon seeds, you would plant them, um, even for your bedding plant, these little ones like this, you would plant them like six to eight weeks before you want to plant them outside. Uh, so I wanna be planting mine, again, about four to six weeks earlier than my average last frost date, just depending on how the weather goes. Um, so that's why I'm planting them just this little bit earlier. Uh, so you just need to pay attention to that um, on, the, on the planting package for some of these plants. It'll say bef how long to plant them before you, how, it'll say how early to plant them before you want to um, put them out in your yard, like how early to sow the seeds. So um, you just need to know that as opposed to the difference of that as opposed to um, sowing you know a certain amount of weeks before your average last frost date so just something to keep in mind so like i said i'm just going to be planting these in these little um nine pack trays uh, and putting them on my grow shelves i already have a couple of trays of pansies the same size going but hopefully we'll all be ready to go out at the same time really early on this spring to give me some some color so i'm just going to make some labels here and I'm gonna fill my trays up. So I'll just get that done real quick. Okay, so I've just filled my trays up uh, with some soilless potting mix, and I just gave them a good tamp down just to make sure the soil was settled. And uh, I sprayed them quite well with the uh, sprayer overhead. The soil wasn't moist when I put it in here, and I don't wanna moisten that soil because it actually has fungus gnats in it. Um, so you might see the odd one flying around now when I open the bucket. There was some there. Snapdragon seeds need light to germinate. They just need to be surface sown. So I'm just going to put a little bit of vermiculite on top of the soil. That'll just help to, oops. Um, That'll just help to hold some moisture around the seeds once I put them on here. And it will help to um, deter fungus growth, um, which should help deter the fungus gnats a little bit. Okay. So I've just put it on first, and then I'll put the snap dragon seeds on next because like I said, they just want to be surface sown. They need the light to germinate. So some plants do. So always read your package um, so you know. So snapdragon seeds are very tiny. So this is the mini snap mix. I'm going to put them in this tray here, and I'm just going to kind of just move. I have a pinch between my finger and thumb, and I'm just kind of wiggling my finger and thumb just to disperse probably about half a dozen to 10 seeds over each block. 
and then I can thin them out later, but it's just easier than placing individual seeds. And Snapdragon seeds are pretty easy to come by anyways. So I want to make sure that I label that before I forget which one I put where. Put this in too. And we'll get into the snap teenies. So this one is pelleted seed. It says there's 50 seeds in here. So with the pelleted seed, you can see the difference in size. When they're pelleted, it helps to um, it helps you to handle the seed more easily. So I will be able to put like one down on each of these spaces much more easily. Oops. So pellets can make planting a lot easier. Um, it's usually just like a clay-like type substance on them. Um, pelleted seed usually works better, best if you can just kind of spritz it every day for about five days just to get the seed, the coating broken down once you're ready for them to grow. But it's important when you're not wanting them to grow that you keep the uh, moisture away from them, which is why they're in the vial. So that's all there is to it. I've just sprayed them a little bit just to make sure that the seeds all have contact with the uh, vermiculite there. And I'm just going to put them under the grow lights because they need light to germinate. And we'll leave them and uh, hopefully we'll see some action on them, um, you know, in the next week here. So uh, I have those snapdragons all done and those pansies done. Um, but I won't be doing a whole lot more um, for about three weeks now. And that's because it is still really far away from my average last frost. So I just wanted to uh, just remind you not to get carried away as you're uh, getting your seeds starting ready. If you live in a cold area like I do, I'm in Saskatchewan, Canada, growing zone three. So my average last frost date isn't until near the end of May. I don't wanna have an entire shelf full of plants uh, that are like a month old before my frost date. You know, all, all, I don't want to have a shelf, grow a shelf full of plants that are ready to go out a month before my last frost date. So those plants I'm hoping to have actually grown up and ready and they are fairly cold tolerant and I'm pretty certain I'll be able to have them out. If not just out unprotected by then I can have my cold frame up and they'll be fine in there. Um, but that's something that I need to be aware of and that's something we all need to be aware of as gardeners is when it's appropriate to plant you know start your plants and how many plants you actually want to be starting indoors early so keep in mind the space that you have the time commitment that you have how strong of lighting that you have and uh, just what kind of vessels you have to start your seeds in because we might start them in really small little nine packs like that but more than likely a lot of plants that you grow are going to need to be bumped up into something larger before they get moved out especially if you start them very early and that's not good for you to be stressing over those plants and space and, and uh, you know, trying to get those ideal conditions all nailed down for them, you know, for, for months on end. And it's not good for the plants because they'll languish, uh, you know, they're not getting those ideal conditions that they want and they just won't be as healthy of plants when you put them out. And they spent so much time indoors, they can really shock when you start to put them out as well. So you have to be careful of how soon you got started on your, your growing. So I just wanted to give you that little reminder as I'm showing you that I'm planting up some seeds to also not get too eager and start planting too much too early. You don't want to become overwhelmed by the process, then it's not fun anymore. And uh, you don't want to be burnt out of gardening before your gardening season has actually started. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.